All right, uh, so we are halfway through the course now, three exams out of six. Um, so sometime during the weekend, probably Saturday, you should have gotten an email back from me on your score on this exam. And I also sent out a video for the solutions. So I don't have to take up class time for the solutions. Uh, I gave them to you, although I did mess up on one of them. One of them, I think it was supposed to be a positive three tenths for a Y coordinate uh, instead of a negative three tenths. Uh, but I made the correction when I graded your exams, so it should have been okay. Okay, so uh, in the standard pattern for exams is I usually give 10 questions, 10 points each. So we got 10 points on any question that was full credit, and the total was out of 100. And again, my grading scale is 90, 80, 70, 60. So if you got a 90 or higher, that's an A. 80 something is a B, 70 something is a C, 60 something is a D, less than 60 is failing. And remember, you get to drop one exam. Um, out of the six. So we've got three down and there are three to go. Okay, the next exam is going to be our most amount of material. It's on uh, trig. Okay, so we're not having that test for quite a while. Looks like on November 6th. Okay, so we've got what? One, two, three, four weeks until the next exam. We'll have quizzes, of course, but then the exam after that looks like it's only a couple of weeks. And then uh, we have just one last test, and that's about it. <clears throat> and we're also entering uh, you know, a holiday season, so to speak. There's a lot of weeks, but we don't meet five days. It seems like a long time since we had a holiday or a break. I think it's Labor Day. But this Thursday, again, is a flex day, so there's only four days this week. So Thursday is, sometimes I like to call it a one-day weekend for you guys, right? So you get a one-day weekend, but we have to come back on Friday. I know it's kind of weird. Okay. <clears throat> And then once November hits, there's all kinds of holidays, right? I think there's a uh, Veterans Day and Thanksgiving. And then before you know it, you know, it's Christmas and we're all done and all that stuff. Okay, so the second half of the semester in the fall, I always notice it kind of goes faster because you have all these holidays and stuff. Okay, and yes, as somebody pointed out, I messed up again here. I put down 4.1. You know and I know there, really, there is no homework 4.1. <clears throat> you can look at it, but so I'm, I guess you can say I'm already ahead by a couple of days because uh, I'm going to start 4.2. And uh, I also have some buffer days uh, at the end also. Okay, so I can afford to slow down, get sick, my internet goes down, you know, all that kind of stuff uh, before. Okay, so I wasn't going to take up any class time discussing um, the previous exam because you have your scores, or you should have your scores, and I gave you a video on the answers. So you can look at that. If you have a question about your individual exam, you're always welcome to come <clears throat> talk to me about that. Okay. In case you're wondering, no, I do not put my scores up on Canvas. I um, have issues with that. And uh, if I can go ahead and say it, I'm not really that much of a fan of Canvas. I just keep the scores separately so it's more flexible. If something goes wrong or if something weird happens, I just rather keep it in my own spreadsheet. You're always welcome to come talk to me about how am I doing in the class and so forth, but I'd rather not just put it on Canvas. And I've had several troubles with Canvas in the past. I'd rather just say, forget it. I'll just keep it on my own uh, spreadsheet, so to speak. Okay. All right. So we're doing trig. Uh, and the homework begins at 4.2. And so we are here. So take an inventory. We're done with that, that, and that. You can see how long chapter four is. But on the other hand, it's not really that long considering we're compressing all of trig into just one chapter, right? I mean, you, you more than likely took a whole class on trig, either in high school or in college somewhere. We're compressing our knowledge of um, trig all in the one semester. The main ideas about trig that you'll need to calculate. And then uh, chapter five is very short. So it was only two weeks, but there's only three sections. And I think that's exponential and log functions. And then uh, we have four sections here to, to fit within the course. All right, so we're on to 4.2, 1 to 39, odd, and 43. As usual, I'll do a lot of the problems for you. So very rapidly through stuff I went over, was it last Wednesday, I guess it was? Okay, so 4.1, the introduction, there's really nothing to it about drawing angles and so forth. Okay, so from trig, we know standard position going directly to the right is considered zero degrees or zero radians. That's by convention. We said so. And then positive is going counterclockwise. Going this way is considered positive. Okay, if I go this way, it's considered negative. All right. All right, so 
you know, we have zero degrees or zero radians this way and positive is going this way. We have the so-called radian measure. <clears throat> and converting one way or the other, since 180 degrees is pi radians, we either multiply by pi over 180 or 180 over pi. You know, how do you know which one it is? Usually the context is clear, but you want degrees on top and radians in the bottom if you're canceling radians. Okay? And you want it the other way around if you're canceling degrees, just to get the units lined up. I'll show you some examples of that. Okay. All right, things that you should be familiar with. Uh, yeah, if we were meeting face to face, I'd make you guys memorize this, but we're not. So in degrees, zero degrees is of course zero radians. 30 degrees is pi over six. 45 degrees is pi over four. 60 degrees is pi over three. 90 degrees is pi over two. Okay. You can memorize it, or for me, you can put it on your cheat sheet. But even if you didn't memorize it, you can always go back and convert by means of the conversion factor, right? Either multiply by pi over 180, if you're going from degrees to radians, or vice versa. If you have radians, you want to change the degrees, go 180 over pi. Okay, <clears throat> and then formulas, again, you can put these on your cheat sheet. <clears throat> length of an arc, S is used for arc length, okay. is R theta, as long as theta is, in, theta is in radians. So say, what do I do if theta is in degrees? You have to change it to radians first, and then use this formula. Okay, so S equals R theta, this is on page 198. And then area of a circular sector, if you make a cut like this, like a cut of a pie or a cut of a cake or something like that, uh, cutting from the center and going like that, you wanna know the area of that piece, one half R squared theta. Once again, theta has to be in radians. So if they give it to you in degrees, first you change it to radians and then plug in the formula. All right, so I'll just do a bunch of problems here. And this is on page 200. Okay, so uh, for those of you that don't have the book and don't plan on getting it, here's that. And a little bit farther down. And then the next page. Let's see. Some there. And then some more there. And I believe that's it. Yeah. Okay. So now I'll get started with some of the homework problems. <clears throat> okay, and quickly, my own little trig review for what we need. Okay, again, ignore any dates that you see. Okay, so here's a circle. I call it a unit circle. What's the unit circle? It's the circle center of the origin with a radius of one. So during trig, we'll say unit circle quite a bit. Okay, so here's zero degrees and also zero radians okay, and a positive theta. So positive, that's a plus going this way. Negative is going this way. So counterclockwise is considered positive. Why? We said so. We all agreed that's what we would do. And negative is going uh, this way in a clockwise direction. And if we go all the way around a circle, that's of course 360 degrees or two pi radians. Okay, so 360 degrees is two pi radians or one revolution. Sometimes we'll abbreviate revolution with rev, R-E-V, going once around. If I divide both of these by two, that means 180 degrees is pi radian, or we'll just put pi, okay? So there's a convention. If you don't put anything up here, it means radian. Okay, so if you know you're talking about degrees, you're supposed to put the little circle there, like 180 degrees, okay? Normally, if it's pi radian, see how I superscript the R? If you don't put that R and you just put pi, it's understood to be radians. Everybody knows that. Okay, so if I have this equation here, right? 180 degrees is pi radians. If I divide both sides by pi radians, I get one. If I divide both sides by 180 degrees, I also get one. So notice this fraction is equal to one. This fraction is also equal to one. So if you want to convert from degrees to radians or vice versa, you use either this one or this one, <clears throat> okay? Now, how do you know which one to pick? Okay. Usually the context is clear, and I'll show you what I mean by that. All right, so number one, 30 degrees, change it to radians. <clears throat> okay, so they give you degrees, right? So that means you wanna cancel degrees and put in radians. Okay, this degree, it's like 30 over one, so the degrees is in the numerator. So in order to cancel, I need degrees in the denominator. So that tells me I want 180 degrees on the bottom and pi radians at top. And so by units analysis, these degrees cancel out. So I have 30 over 180, which is pi over six radians. And if it's pi over six radians, again, we normally just say pi over six. 
right? So if I have degrees, I want to get rid of degrees, that means I put degrees in the bottom. Okay, that tells me it's pi over 180. Okay, number seven, somewhat similar. Negative 72 degrees. Well, for these problems, it doesn't really matter that they give you the negative. Just put the negative in the answer. It's no big deal, okay? If you're drawing the angle, right, then you know positive means you're going this way. Negative means you're going this way. And we will have to draw some angles in a moment. All right, three pi over four radians. <clears throat> Change it to degrees. Okay, so they give it to me in radians, so I need to cancel out radians. Okay, that tells me I want radians in the bottom and degrees on the top. So that tells me 180 over pi. 180 degrees divided by pi radians. So that way the radians cancels out. Okay, the pi's also cancel out. That happens a lot. You normally want the pi's to cancel out. And then let's see, 180 divided by four cancels to be 45. So I have 45 times three, which is 135 degrees. So my answer is 135 degrees. So this is going from radians to degrees. And again, if you want to put these examples on your cheat sheet for the next exam, you may. Although again, our next test isn't going to be for quite a while. <clears throat> okay, here's another one, 11. <clears throat> negative 11 pi over six radians. And don't really worry now about the negative. It just means you're going in a clockwise direction. It's a negative direction, but who cares? Your answer is going to be negative. Okay, so you have radians. To cancel radians, I want radians in a denominator. So that tells me to put 180 over pi. So these R's cancel out. The pi's also cancel out. That's usually what happens in these situations, right? You shouldn't get a pi squared. That'd be kind of weird to get a pi squared. You get a pi on top and on bottom, or, uh, I'm sorry, you have two pi's on top to have a pi squared, or two pi's on the bottom like a pi squared. That would be very, very unusual. Normally, for something like this, you want the pi's to cancel out. So the pi's cancel out. Uh, 180 divided by 60 is 30. So when you multiply negative 330 degrees. All right, then they give us some questions of drawing some angles. Okay. Show the approximate location on a unit circle for the given value of t. So if it's degrees, I think you're all pretty comfortable with degrees. So I'm going to show you some of the radian ones, especially the negatives, since we're not as comfortable with radians and we're not as comfortable with negatives. So 23a, negative pi over 4. Okay, So if you happen to have this memorized, that's great. Pi over 4 is 45 degrees. Okay, So the theta is negative 45 degrees. So positive 45 degrees, I know would go like this, right? But since it's negative, I come down 45 degrees and draw my angle like so. So this is negative pi over 4. It's the same as negative 45 degrees, right? Okay, so again, the convention is 0 is this way. This is 0. And then going this way is positive, going down is considered negative. Okay, here's another one, negative four pi over three. Okay, so that's a little bit tougher. So I think of positive four pi over three first. So once I think of the positive, I can figure out the negative. Now, if I go all the way to here, that's pi, right? So four pi over three would come over like so. So it's a little bit more than halfway. That's positive four pi over three. So now I have to force my brain to say, I'm going backwards now. If I'm going in a negative direction, coming this way, it's more than halfway, and it jumps into the second closet. Okay, so negative four pi over three would go something like that. Okay, it's actually negative uh, 240 degrees. Um, and you can work that out if you want to, but this is just the approximate location. Okay. And now for a much tougher one, um, negative 37 pi over 6. Oh boy, how do you figure out negative 37 pi over 6? Okay, so here's a strategy I have for negative 37 pi over 6. I'll cover this up for a moment. All right, now, you know that every time I go around a circle, that is 2 pi, right? Now, 2 pi, I need a common denominator of six. So what's two pi with the denominator of six? That would be 12 pi over six. Okay, so every time I go around a circle, it's 12 pi over six. <clears throat> okay, so what I decided to do was keep adding 12 pi over six until I get something near negative 37. Okay, the closest I can get is 36 pi over six, which is the same as six pi. Okay, so this is three revolutions. 
and six, six pi is 36 pi over six. And now negative 37 pi over six plus 36 pi over six is a negative pi over six. That's negative 30 degrees. All right, so now this tells me I'm going three revolutions in the negative direction and then go another 30 degrees, okay? So here's what I did. Starting from the origin, I go around once and then I go around twice and I go around three times. So this little spiral thing is indicate I go around once, that's negative two pi. I go around twice, negative four pi. I go around three times, that's negative six pi, negative 36 pi over six. And then I go another negative pi over six. So that'll answer me here. So this angle of negative 37 pi over six is right here. It's coterminal. It lands in the same spot as negative pi over six. But technically, if you're drawing the angle, if you're drawing the actual angle, you have to go backwards one, two, three times, and then finally land over here. So it's a little bit tricky. All right, and then D asks for a negative seven pi over four. Okay, well, positive seven pi over four lands me here. We go like that. It's almost two pi, right? So it's almost a full revolution. Seven pi over four. <clears throat> Another way to think of this, I play this game again, negative seven pi over four plus eight pi over four is pi over four. Okay. And eight pi over four is two pi. Okay. So it lands at the same spot as pi over four. They are co-terminal. Okay. So I draw 45 degrees. And then to actually draw the angle of negative seven pi over four, I go backwards, okay, almost a full revolution. And so this is the angle, negative seven pi over four. Or again, you can think of, I know positive seven pi over four would aim me like this. Okay. I would be aiming this direction. Okay. So it would go like this. Then I have to do the same thing except going backwards. So now if I go backwards, seven pi over four, I aim over here now. All right, so here's negative seven pi over four. <clears throat> okay, now a quick word about this. Um, you should not draw this angle. That's pi over four. Okay, so please distinguish between co-terminal angles and the actual angle. So if you drew this angle like there and draw the arrows like that, that would not be negative seven pi over four. Yes, it lands you in the same spot. So the fancy language is it's coterminal. Pi over four is coterminal with negative seven pi over four. But the actual angle negative seven pi over four is like that. Just like over here, the actual angle of a negative 30, what was it? Negative 37 pi over six is to go one, two, three around negative and then another negative pi over six. So this is the actual angle, negative 37 pi over six. Yes, it's co-terminal with negative pi over six. It lands you in the same spot. Okay, but very technically, it's not the same angle. Okay. All right, then we have uh, 25 and 27. Okay. Give you the setup for those. They say if P of T has certain coordinates, find the coordinates of these, P of T plus pi or whatever, so what's happening? Okay, so the setup is this picture here. All right, so they give you an angle T this time. In fact, they tell you where it lands, three-fifths, four-fifths. Negative T would look like this, right? They might ask you to add pi. If you add pi, pi is 180 degrees off, so that would land you so let's say if you have t right here, t plus pi lands you over here. It's across by 180 degrees. Okay. So here's an example right here. Here is t. This is t plus pi. And t minus pi would land you in the same spot. Okay. If you have t minus 180 degrees, it's coterminal with t plus pi. Okay. So this is a point x comma y. This is negative x, negative y by symmetry. All right, so let's take a look. <clears throat> they ask you for all this stuff. So P of T, they say, is 3 fifths, 4 fifths. In other words, here's the point 3 fifths, 4 fifths. So this is T, 
this would be the negative of the angle, negative T. All right, so part A. P of T plus pi is asked for. Here's the actual question, and here are the answers. Okay, so T plus pi lands you over here, which is exactly opposite of this. I'm in the third quadrant. So if this is three-fifths, four-fifths, the symmetric point on this side would be negative three-fifths, negative four-fifths. So that's the answer to A. Part B. Okay, how about part B? P of negative T. Now negative T, actually maybe you can't see it that well. This is negative T. That's in quadrant four. So let's see, if we're in quadrant four, X is what sign? S-I-G-N? Positive, but Y is negative. So this would be three-fifths negative four-fifths. So one more time, if the angle T is here, negative T is here. I'm in the fourth quadrant. So fourth quadrant X still going to the right is positive, but Y you'd be going down, so that would be negative. So the X coordinate is still three fifths, but the Y coordinate is the opposite of four fifths, negative four fifths. Okay. Okay, C, P of T minus pi. T minus pi, well, that lands you in the same spot as T plus pi, right? We said T plus 180, T minus 180. <clears throat> so the answer to C is the same as A, negative three-fifths, negative four-fifths. Okay, so same thing, it lands you over here. And finally, D, P of negative T minus pi. Okay. Look at the answer to B, P of negative T lands you here. All right, so that's P of negative T. Now, what about negative T minus pi? That's 180 degrees off of that. So that'll land you over here. So I'm in the second quadrant. So do you recall what's happening in the second quadrant? In the second quadrant, X is negative, Y is positive. So there we are. So I land at negative three fifths, four fifths for that one. Negative three fifths, four fifths for D. All right. All right, so that's 25. Uh, there's only other, one other problem out there, 27. So this would be 27 on its own. <clears throat> okay, then we have some problems involving arc length and area, once again. So a little mini derivation of the formulas again, but I've already shown it to you today and even last time. <clears throat> okay, so if you have a circle, okay, arc length, we use S for arc length. Okay, we don't use L because L might be used for other stuff. Okay, so if I walk along the circle, along this curved path like this, okay, and the radius of the circle is R, okay, and here's the angle theta. Okay, so here's theta. If I walk along the circle, how far have I walked? <clears throat> okay, if I go all the way around the circle, that's 2 pi R. That's the formula the circumference of a whole circle. But if I only go a fractional amount, I just take the fractional amount times the whole 2 pi r. Okay. Well, if I go all the way around a circle, how many radians have I walked? Well, that's 2 pi, full revolution. But I'm only going theta. So the fractional amount is theta over 2 pi. So this is the fraction of the whole circle, theta over 2 pi. So the fraction amount times the whole circle circumference, 2 pi r, the two pi's very conveniently cancel out. So all I have is R times theta. So the formula is S equals R theta, as long as theta is in radians. And once again, a derivation of the area of a sector. Okay, so you cut out a piece of pie, a piece of cake that starts at the center, cut, cut, take this piece of pie out. What's the area, right? So again, it's a fraction of the whole circle. If I go all the way around, that's pi R squared for the area but I'm not doing the entire part. If I go all the way around, it's two pi. If I have a fractional amount theta, then it's theta over two pi times the formula for the area of the whole circle pi r squared. Pi's cancel out, you're left with one half r squared theta. And this is the fractional amount of the whole circle. That says fractional amount of whole circle. So the formula for the area, if you wanna put it on your cheat sheet again, you may. Area is one half r squared theta. 
as long as theta is in radian. So that's the way that works. <clears throat> All right, so I'll show you some of those. And maybe that's about it. Okay, so some of these, say find the length of an arc, uh, find the length of the arc, find the median measure and all this kind of stuff, okay? So let's look at say, um, 29. Find the length of an arc with an angle 45 degrees in a circle with radius 8 meters. Okay, so 45 degrees, 8 meters. <clears throat> 45 degrees, 8 meters. So the first thing I notice is in order for me to use the formula S equals R theta, theta must be in radians. So I change 45 degrees to pi over 4. Now you either have it memorized or you can put it on your cheat sheet. Okay, I mean, they gave us that table I showed you from the text. Uh, let's see where it go. Right, 45 degrees is pi over four. Okay. Ideally, you have it memorized, but you can always use the formula, right? So say 45 degrees times pi over 180 degrees cancel out, and 45 goes into 180 exactly four times, so pi over four radians. Okay. And again, the R is optional; you don't have to put that. <clears throat> so the arc length formula is R theta, as long as you're in radians, now I'm in radians pi over 4. Okay, so r times theta, r is 8, so 8 times pi over 4 comes out to be 2 pi, 2 pi meters, which is approximately 6.28 meters. Okay, so that's the actual length that I've walked. So if I'm on this circle with a radius of 8 meters and I walk 45 degrees, okay, 2 pi meters, which is about 6.28. Okay. Okay, let's look at 33. Find the length of the arc in the figure. Okay, so they're showing you the radius is four and you have 110 degrees right here. But the length of the arc in the figure is this red. Okay. So, so it looks like you're walking more than half the circle, right? You're walking the red part all the way there. <clears throat> so, if this is 110 degrees, the rest must be 360 minus 110, which is 250, right? So this angle that I've walked must be 250 degrees. So one more time, you're walking along the red. <clears throat> if I go all the way around, it's 360. So I've gone 360 minus 110 or 250. So 250 degrees, R equals four. <clears throat> okay, so once again, I need to change degrees to radians. So I multiply by pi over 180, okay, and it comes out to be 25 pi over 18. Okay, and this time I decided not to put the R for radians. That's the understanding, right? If you don't put anything, it means R. Okay, and just plug into the formula. Arc length S is R times theta. So the radius they told me was four, back in the problem. And the theta in radians is now this 25 pi over 15. Uh, over 18, sorry. Okay, so R theta is 4 times 25 pi over 18. Simplify 50 pi over 9 is the exact value. Okay, and you want a decimal approximation, 17.45. Okay, and it doesn't look like they give me any units. So if they don't give me any units, I don't give them any units. 17.45, just leave it. All right, uh, 35, find the area of the circular sector with angle one half radian and a circle of radius 10 meters, okay? Now, this time they actually gave me the angle in radians, so I don't have to convert. Okay, the previous ones they've given me in degrees, which of course most of us are more comfortable with, but we're supposed to have it in um, radians. But for 35, they already gave it to me with theta being a half. So they want area, so I use the area formula, one half r squared theta. <clears throat> so here we go, area is one half r squared theta. So one half radius is 10, so 10 squared times a half, punch it all out, 25 meters squared. Remember, of course, area is square units, okay? 
volume is cubic units, right? So if they want area, it's square units, in this case, square meters. Okay. Here we go. Then let's see, problem 39. Uh, find the length of an arc with angle 45 degrees in a circle with radius two miles. Okay. Whoops. Uh, what am I looking at? Um, I'm on a 39, sorry. I was looking at the wrong one. Here we go. 39, find the area of the sector in the figure. Okay, so it looks like a piece of pie. Okay, so this is 65 degrees and the radius is four. So if I cut this out and eat it, right, how much have I eaten the area, so to speak? So once again, this one is in degrees. First, I have to change it to radians, right? So here's the picture. So 65 degrees multiplied by pi over 180. Again, how do you know it's pi over 180 or 180 over pi? If you have degrees, you need to cancel the degrees. So to cancel the degrees, degrees just goes on the bottom. If you want to cancel radians, you want radians in the bottom. That tells you 180 over pi. Okay, after cancellation, that's 13 pi over 36. And then I use the formula. So area is one half r squared theta. So one half radius is four, four squared, 13 pi over 36. So simplifying as much as possible the arithmetic, 26 pi over nine is the best exact answer. And then punch it in your calculator, 9.08. They do not give me any units here. So if they don't give me any units, there's no units for me to give them. And then just leave it alone. Okay. So that's that. Okay, finally, um, what do I want? 43. <clears throat> At the equator, the radius of the Earth is approximately 3,960 miles. Okay, so there's a picture of the Earth here. You go all the way around, it's 3,960 miles. I'm sorry, not all the way around. The radius is 3,960 miles. Determine in miles per hour the speed at which a point on the equator is moving as, as a result of the Earth's rotation about its axis. Okay, so what is the speed? How do I figure that out? Okay. <clears throat> All right, so first, what is the circumference of the Earth? <clears throat> okay, so at the equator, so circumference is 2 pi r, so 2 pi times 3960. Okay, so that's 24,881.41 miles, roughly 25,000 miles. Okay, <clears throat> so some trivia. If you go all the way around the Earth at the equator, okay, now if you go higher up, like, you know, the San Francisco Bay Area, going all the way around is not as much. But of course, if you're near the North Pole or South Pole, to say, you know, quote, unquote, around the world, well, it's not very much at all. But at the equator, right, if you go all the way around the Earth at the equator, it's about 25,000 miles, 24,081 miles. Point four one. Okay, now it asks for the speed. Okay, well, how long does it take to go all the way around? Well, 24 hours, right? The length of a day. So 24,881.41 miles divided by 24 hours. You can see it's about a thousand. Okay, so it comes out to be a thousand thirty-seven miles per hour. Okay, so if you're standing on the equator anywhere, okay, you're spinning around at over a thousand miles per hour. You don't feel that, I guess, you don't notice it, but you are just because of the Earth rotating about its axis. It takes a day to go all the way around, 24 hours. So 24 hours, 24,881 miles. So at the equator, you're going 1,037 miles per hour, as it were. Okay. All right, folks, I'm actually done for today. Uh, I'll check the chat in just a second, second and see if you have any questions, but if not, I'll be finishing up. Okay, just tell you what we're heading for in section three. So I'll just review something. So 4.3, we're doing right triangle trigonometry. Right triangle trigonometry. 
And so hopefully you've seen some of this stuff before. And some of you may have heard of SOHCAHTOA, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. -H -H See, I never heard of it, that's okay. I'll give you everything you need. So if you have a right triangle with a right angle, and this is an angle, call it theta. This is the Greek letter theta. Okay, we have the hypotenuse, which I'll abbreviate as height, H-Y-P. Okay, and then if you go across here, that's considered the opposite side, which I'm putting as O-P-P, -P, opposite. And this is the adjacent side, A-D-J, uh, which for us means adjacent. So given an angle theta, which is not the right angle, okay, we already know the hypotenuse is always opposite the 90 degree angle. Okay, if I go across here, that's the opposite side. And this one over here is the adjacent side. Okay, and what's this Soka Toa stuff? And if you want, again, if you want to put it on your cheat sheet, you may, but S-O-H stands for sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse, O-H. Sine is opposite of hypotenuse. The ka, C-A-H, cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then toa, tangent of theta, is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so I think you've heard of this before. So sine, opposite hypotenuse. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent, <coughs> opposite over adjacent. Okay, so these are the trig relations if you have a right triangle. Then we have the reciprocal relations. Here are the reciprocals. Reciprocal of cotangent is tangent, one over tangent theta. Reciprocal of secant is the cosine. So secant theta is one over cosine theta. And cosecant of theta is one over the sine of theta. Okay. So I didn't bother writing these, but you could. It's not necessary. So you know, if you flip sine of theta, which is cosecant, that means cosecant would be what? Hypotenuse over opposite. Normally we don't bother writing those down. We just say you find the sine of theta and then you just flip it. Likewise, for cosine, the reciprocal is the secant. So I guess you could say hypotenuse over adjacent, but we usually don't bother with that. Just say come up with the cosine theta and then the secant is the reciprocal, All right? So if you want to put these on your cheat sheet, you may. <clears throat> There's one memory trick that I often say to students that they have to memorize it, is if one trig function has a co, the reciprocal does not have a co. Okay. So one has a co, the other doesn't have a co. So for instance, secant, secant there's no co, right? So that means the reciprocal has a co, cosine. Okay, co secant, so there's a co. So the reciprocal does not have a co, sine. And this is pretty obvious. Most students don't have any trouble with this. Cotangent and tangent are obviously reciprocal. Okay, so that's going to be 4.3, and I'll start that tomorrow. Okay, so let me stop the share and check the chat real quickly. <clears throat> um, are we required to leave in decimal or exact value? So for now, I'd like you to have both. So exact value means leave pi as pi, like leave the answer as 26 pi over 9. But yeah, uh, you want to know a decimal approximation also, so that would be good. Okay, uh, what was the answer to 35? Uh, the answer to 35 was 25 square meters. 25 meters squared is the answer to 35. Okay. And let's see, that's it for the chat. All right, so uh, anybody else have a question? Either put it in the chat or unmute yourself. Otherwise, we're done, folks. And um, yeah, again, according to schedule, I was supposed to do section one, but there is no section one, so I'm already ahead, I guess. Okay, so anybody else, please? That's it. All right, that'll do it for today. So have a good day, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone.